Okay, good morning everybody. Um, I'm Berta and he's David. Hello. Um, we are here uh, to share with you how to do really terrible work. And now being here, I cannot stop and share with you something that I have found in my 20 years of experience and 20 years of being a woman uh, in a career. I have the key to one of the biggest gender equalizer. We are both, women and men, equally good at doing the same mistakes. We are equally good at making and falling on the same tracks, and really we are all equally good at doing terrible work, are we all? We are, we are. And the uh, way we're going to do this presentation is Berta is going to represent the client party, I'll represent the agency party, and uh, uh, this election goes well. <laughs> good. So something that we are actually really good at work for Mars and something that I'm very lucky is that making sure that advertising really works. So we know that advertising works at Mars. Um, but something that we need to prove as well, that creativity in advertising also works for Mars. So you can believe on it, but something that we did actually, we brought a scientific approach. We actually invested in single source, and single source was actually able to prove for us in the eight markets that we invested that creativity drove sales. When we proved that, it was actually much easier for us to work with the agency and ensure that we're pushing them to drive creativity. We're actually able to measure how much percentage of sales creativity drives that business. And it's not just Mars. Um, the IPA in London, the uh, Institute of Practitioners of Advertising, did a rigorous discipline study over 12 years um, recently. And this guy, Peter Feld, like this mad scientist guy, and he analyzed why effective work was effective. And there's reams of data that you could look at, but the, the gist of it is award-winning effective work is 10 times more effective than just regular effective work. So we now have metrics that prove Creativity is good. It's an economic multiplier when applied right. When I talk about creativity, though, from the agency side, I'm not talking about what's happening in these award shows these days. Uh, BBO is very well awarded, but it's kind of become a scourge of all the scammy stuff that's out there, like, um, like a poster for the Singapore sperm bank or other kind of fake things. I'm talking about work for real clients like Mars um, that delight and surround their audience with just beautiful things and improve sales. And you know, when I was a kid at Shy Dave a million years ago, I won my first big award and I showed it to Leah, I go, oh, are you happy for me? He goes, I'll be happy when you do it for Apple. And then I did it for Apple, you know, and that's how great careers are made. So if you creators out there, that's why I highly recommend do it for the real stuff. Yeah, and then there's something that is important. It's not only really creativity, but what is the message that you want to communicate? And some mistake that we have done is that we actually focus more on what the brands want to say. So we spend so much time as marketeers thinking about the brands. We love them, we understand them, we have fully defined them. And then we go to the agency and, and tell them, this is what I want to say. This is a big mistake because something that we should actually be doing is it starts by thinking, how do I want my audience to feel? What is that connection that I want to create with the audience? So let's just stop thinking about what do I want to say, and let's start thinking about how do I want them to feel. And that's something that we have done, and in all cases, let's have a look. This is like not bad. New Extra Dessert Delights. <laughs> New Extra Dessert Delights. All the flavor of key lime pie. All the flavor of key lime pie. In a delicious five-calorie stick of gum. Dessert Delights gum from Extra. When you see that, you can just imagine the market here thinking, I absolutely want the key lime pie in the ad, please, because people are not going to understand it otherwise. Um, but it didn't create any connection. I could see your faces when you were looking at that, right? It looks sad. Yeah, they did. <laughs> it's sad. And sorry for us. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, you can't just do art. I was on a panel with Lee Clow and Bogusky, I don't know, 10 years ago, and somebody asked, is what we do art? I think what we came out was, in pure art, the artist asks and answers his or her own questions. That's not what we do. In our art, the client asks the question. Well, we have to answer it with art so that people feel connected and they feel love for our brands. And so we, we try to do that with this piece.
Sometimes the little things last the longest. Give extra, get extra. So that worked really well for us, and we're very happy about that connection and that emotional benefit that we established. But we really wanted to see if it was just good luck or if we could actually do it again. And this is what we follow through. Wise men say only fools rush in. Get extra. So I remember when that was presented as a storyboard, actually the only feedback we could reflect the agency was not whether it was on strategy and whether the product was represented. The only thing we could talk about is how it makes us feel. And we actually had some tears in the room if I remember well. Um, but anyway, let's let's come back to where we're here for and it's about talk about terrible work. And um, one of the great tools that we have to create really bad work is to make sure that you are working with your creatives and overwhelming them with meetings, overwhelming them with different decisions, overwhelming them with briefs. Um, I still remember when I was a young marketeer and I, I went very proudly to the marketing advertising school. And one of the biggest training that they gave to us was this um, how to brief an agency. Um, so they gave us the first brief, uh, so which was called um, the communication brief, which was supposed to define what the communication message was more appropriate according to the USP and according to the benefit function and emotional and social that you have defined for your brand. Uh, once you have done that, um, then you have to go to the um, concept brief, which was to establish the right concept for the right communication campaign. And then you have to go into the campaign brief, which was what is the right platform for the grand campaign. By the time you go to the creative brief, you forgot what you wanted to talk about. The worst thing is that you forgot. The forgot is the worst thing is that you share all these things with the agencies. Um, so no wonder at that time they didn't want the client to see the creative. Um, so if you really handcuff your creatives, and there is no way that you are going to make uh, good work, um, you, you are just stopping any magic from being creative.
No, I'm sad. I know. Yeah. You remember that, right? Yeah. But, but you know, it's also the agency's fault, too, because an agency is what I call maliciously obedient. In other words, you just, yes, 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 yes yourself kind of out the door because you're terrified. That's not good either. Um, an agency should be, the, the metaphor I like is chefs, not waiters. A waiter just takes the order and gives you what you asked for. That's not really valuable. A chef brings you sauces and things you couldn't imagine, but once you taste it, like, give me more of that, and uh, that's what you should do. That takes pushback. Yeah. And uh, a good client like Berta and Mars, they, they invite pushback and debate. And um, that's what kind of happened with this. Uh, this next thing I'm going to show you is pedigree. Usually what you see for um, dog food commercials is heading on ahead and rolling around the grass. But this kind of approach of not being maliciously obedient, not being in prison, led to something kind of different. We came up with a syllogism, you know, dogs bring out the best of people, so people should bring out the best in dogs, feed the good. And then it led to a bunch of things like this long form uh, digital film. My name's Matt, I'm 23 years old. I did two years in prison for a grand larceny and burglary. My name is Joey, I'm 38 years old. I did 12 years in prison for armed robbery. When I got out, I didn't really know what to do with myself. Uh, felt really alone walking around the city, didn't really talk to anyone. It was really strange to me. At first, when I got out, I couldn't even deal with the reality of being outside. Everything had changed. Things didn't exist that now exist. My mom and grandmother died on the same day, and other than that, I don't have any other family. When I got home to the empty house, I realized I was truly alone and that I was pretty scared for my future. My dad told me I should get my act together before I can come home. So I went to this motel. But that's all I could do at the moment. I wasn't sure I could deal with life out here. I went down to the animal shelter. And when I walked in there, there were so many different dogs. I kind of wished I could take all of them home with me. They all looked kind of sad and lonely, just like I was. Just caged in. When I went to the shelter, knowing that every one of these dogs will die eventually if someone does not adopt them, I made a decision to adopt at least one of them, and then I came up on Sadie. When I saw Jeannie, I just fell in love with her. She was just an awesome dog. She was great. You're cutie. There was a moment that I knew Sadie is the one I need to get and what I need to have to get my life in order. I filled out all the paperwork and I adopted Jeannie and I took her back to the motel with me. I gave her a bath. It was funny to see her reaction to it. I adopted Sadie. I took her home. We played ball and ran her around and trained her a little bit. I took her to the lake. I took her to a couple parks. She's super friendly. And it's funny because people started coming up and talking to me because of Jeannie. Because she is so cute and such a great dog. Having a dog with me in this house was so much better. No more lonely, you're not alone anymore. Sadie became my family. Things started looking up, so I decided to get cleaned up and look for a job. Got a haircut, got some new clothes, and started walking around, filling out job applications, trying to find some work. I got a phone call from Alexis. She runs the kennel, told me she had a job for me, that I could start training dogs for a few weeks at a time, and that's exactly what I need to be doing. And that would not have happened if I would not have been in the dog program in prison. And when she dropped Lacey off, Sadie got along with her immediately. Our family was growing. Oh. I called my dad and asked him to come meet me. You got a new friend? Yep, this is Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. He adopted her. Hi, Jeannie. <laughs> she is a good girl. Huh? Yeah, she is. You look good, buddy. Thank you. All cleaned up, got a yep. haircut. Yep, I had a job interview today. How'd that at go? At the you motorcycle work? shop, it went good, I think. You ready to come home? Yeah, I'd love to come back home. Yeah? Come here, buddy. I feel like my future's bright again with Jeannie there with me. I love her. She's my best friend. And you can do an ad. This was on the World Series game last night.
about this guy? This guy's been through a lot. Dogs bring out the good in us. Pedigree brings out the good in them. And you can do some consecutive right hand page print, so it's better with a dog. Yeah, and I, I remember when I saw this work, I mean, I, I, I was not part of it. I was very jealous of all my colleagues that was part of it. But I really just wanted to go home and tell my pet how important he is for me. Which, of course, he did it quite understood. Um, but if you think about what they did here, they took tremendous risk. I mean, uh, pet food advertising has been so coded to them. And they didn't go for the pouring of the product into a shiny bowl, and they didn't go for the doggy, taily, jumping, uh, and you know, getting into the food. All these things were eliminated. And every time they eliminated one of those, they felt the fear. They, they, they were putting themselves at risk. And that's one of the things that is the easiest not to do. It's very easy not to take risk. You will never get fired if you don't take any risk. There is no risk in actually rejecting a good idea because you will never know about it. Nobody ever will know about it. Only you will know about it. Um, so not taking risk is the easiest thing and probably sometimes they're good for the career. But the biggest risk for me is actually doing work that is bad, is doing work that is completely invisible, is doing work that does nothing. That's the biggest risk of all. And uh, for your agency side people, stop constantly pushing risk. Um, clients, not necessarily Berta, but clients in general, are trained in their whole life to avoid risk, minimize risk. In fact, their lifestyles are about, you know, not risk. Everything is not risk. So you constantly have Tourette's and say, hey, let's take a risk. It's anathema. The good thing to do is to prove your idea is not risky. It's not risky to be loved or to have people think your product is really cool and to think you're great or that you bring something to the world that's good or that you're fun, or that you're likable, and you want to be somebody you want to hang around with. So these are risks that Skittles did not take. They went for it. Here's some interesting uh, online films. Touch the rainbow! No, seriously. Put your index finger on your screen where the Skittle is. A video is going to start, and your finger is going to be so delicious. So make sure it's there. Now. Lick the rainbow! Taste the rainbow! And then there was this. Touch the rainbow! No, seriously. Put your index finger on your screen where the skittle is. A video is going to start and your finger is going to help fight crime. So make sure it's there. Now. Stupid finger! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Kasha, did you really think you'd get away with stealing all those Skittles? But I didn't steal these. They're mine. I don't see your name on them. Actually, it's on every one. What is your name? S? Yeah? S from Skittles Camp 97? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Cage! What's up, man? I didn't recognize you with the hat. Reunite the rainbow! Taste the rainbow. So a good product from this world was very well done by the video, but also we had our sister agency GTV uh, in the US, and they created some great work for the same platform for Skittles as well. Thanks, Grandma. Psst, Tommy, smash me, and I'll turn into Skittles. Skittles. Hmm. Why, Tommy? Why? Smash the rainbow! Taste the rainbow!
Good, so um, in, in these things, what we have seen is actually that. There's one more. There's one more? Okay, let's pay another one then. It was good. Just one lemon left. Lemon Skittles are my favorite. They're my favorite. Let's settle it the usual way. Settle it the usual way! 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 Settle the rainbow! Taste the rainbow! That was fair play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Yeah, so that was our actually Super Bowl ad uh, last year for, for Skittles. Um, so one of the things as well that we sometimes do is that we look at uh, advertising agents in a certain way. We always go, we've been going for, 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 you know, for the same type of things uh, to them. Um, productions, one ad a year, uh, big production money, good director, good casting, etc., etc. And sometimes you can have other needs. You just want something cheap and fast, something that is good for digital, that is more and more uh, production of content. And we just think that the people in the agency might not be able to do it because they have trained to think in a certain way. Um, what we do is actually just go back to them and push them and ask them what we want to do different. Why do we need them to behave different, to think different, and come with us in the journey? So it's about pushing them to new things with us. Yeah. And the agency should never let our, or perceived obstacles stand in the way. I mean, whatever comes your way, adapt and view it as a liberating thing to try something new. Um, we've gotten really good at good, cheap, and fast. You know, in the old days when I was a young, back in the ancient days when I was a young writer, uh, all these old creators had this poster on their wall that said, good, cheap, fast, pick two. If you wanted a good and cheap, you can have it fast. If you wanted a fast or good, it couldn't be cheap. But today it's pick three. So they had no money. This is for Twix, no money, no anything. Can you do something for Throwback Thursday? We whip these together in a matter of days for nothing. We would have introduced Twix Bites in the 80s, but... Tight. Oh. <laughs> and then the next Thursday, in this room. These, these are Twix Bites. Cookie, chocolate, and caramel in a bite size. It's such a great idea, you're probably wondering, why didn't we think of these years ago? <coughs> so, what are you getting all done up for? I got a big meeting. I'm gonna pitch my idea for a bite-sized Twix. Oh, that's a good idea. I know, I know. <laughs> I really feel like this could be my big team. Your favorite bars, bite-sized. Twix Bites. Good. Uh, another thing that you can do very easily is just stop thinking and, and allowing tests and research to do the work for you. Um, you've done all the work, you come to the great creator idea, you feel excited, you feel it's the right thing, but there come the tests. And the results of the test are not exactly what you expected. And you, you abandon your idea, you abandon what your gut is telling you to do. And, and this is not something that is, is a way to get good creative. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not saying that research is not necessary. You just to use the research at the right time and for the right question. Use research to understand how advertising work. Use research to understand what is the message and whether that message is connecting. But really, if testing was a good way of getting advertising, the world would be full with good ads, and that's not the case. Yeah, and on the flip side, don't let your ears fall off. Um, you know, Berta and the other Mars team have great invaluable insights, and we do it kind of collectively. It's collective magic. So I would recommend run towards that, don't run away from it. Something as well is about your audience. We, we talk about understanding them, but how are you portraying them? And something that um, is a big mistake is thinking about your audience as a two-dimensional box, boxing them in certain roles and showing them in ways that are actually not true to the real are. Yeah, and when you, when you give bad briefs and, and, and show two-dimensional portrayals of your audience, only bad embarrassing work can follow. There's no way to fix it. Um, so this next piece is from like the old days. Um, I don't know if men or women created it, but it feels like dudes did it. So even if women did it, a bad wraith makes them act like stupid dudes. <laughs> Only a chocolate this pure can be this silky and make you savor, sigh, melt. Dove Pure.
summer silk chocolate, now with the tantalizing crunch of almond. My moment, my dove. See now, I'm sad again. Do you do that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do that. Really chocolate, negligee, soft music, definitely a man did this. Probably. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure. Probably. Oh. Okay, um, so something that we wanted to do is actually to we talk about portraying the audience, so we did something better, and we just start thinking about what is the women that we actually want to portray in our movies, so we created this. Yeah, and what does a little piece of chocolate actually feel like in a way that's dignified and respectful? conversations that we were having was about what is the type of heroine that we want to portray, what is the thing that we want to say about the women, somehow like we had a mission uh, about portraying a women that we all feel proud of, and we choose not to show the women in any of their stereotypical roles, roles. she's not a mom, she's not an executive woman, uh, she's not a flirty girl, she's not a grandmother, she's not a wife, she's who she is. And, and what we really wanted to portray, we wanted to celebrate and we wanted to magnify the inner confident in women. So that's something as well that as, as role as in, in our jobs, you can use as well to help societies that are viewing things in a different way. So very, very good that we actually did this type of work and celebrating inner confidence. Which is kind of a good segue to this. Yeah, and, and again, that's, that's something as well that um, we, with this work we were really focusing on is what is that insight? What is that reduction on nugget that we want to focus on what we were doing? Um, this type of work or any type of work. Sometimes we get too trapped on the strategy, you know, we work with the strategic planners, we have done strategic studies, uh, we have PowerPoints to present, we have people to convince, and we end up focusing so much time on the strategy that we expect actually the strategy to create good advertising. And we should spend less time on the strategy and more time on trying to find what is that reduction of nugget, what is that truly human truth that you want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, the strategy is the big ticket to the journey to get an insight. It's not the end. And by the way, execution is not the end either. On the agency side, a lot of times we fall in love with sparkly things that seem to, you know, glue things together, but it's not an insight. Because the insight leads to a holy grail, which is a platform. Platform is not a campaign. A campaign is, again, strung together things that have something in common. A platform is like, it's like Manhattan, and I can build all these amazing buildings on it, and parks, and all these things. Platform is the, the win for any client. So we had a good strategy for Snickers, um, and that was, if you're a young guy, um, and you're really hungry, Snickers will sort you out. It's a pack of peanuts, there's a lot of stuff, you won't be hungry. But that's, you could say about broccoli, you know, you know, that'll sort you out too. The insight was, you're not you when you're hungry. And it's now in 80 plus countries, you're not you when you're hungry is a universal human condition kind of thing. No matter where you are, Dubai, here, South America, 
You're always cracking when you're hungry and you do silly things. Um, so when you have a platform like that, it lets you present the client and the product in ways you never would have thought of if you didn't have it. And uh, let's just show you some of that. It started almost seven years ago in Super Bowl 2010 with the spot of the year uh, where we kind of um, asked Eddie White out of retirement. Mike, what is your deal, oh, man? Oh, come on, man. You've been riding me all day. Mike, you're playing like Betty White out there. That's not what your girlfriend said. Oh, baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my 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 Eat a Snickers. Better? Better. Hi. I'm all bad. That hurt. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. So when we shot that with uh, Betty White, obviously we didn't you know, tackle, at the time, 89-year-old Betty White. So they had a stunt person, and then they laid Betty White down in the mud for the, to resume the shoot, and then the guy got on top of her and she yelled out, I like when the guy buys me drinks first. <laughs> but uh, we have a platform like this. Um, you start well, but you can continue to consistently do well. So this is a more recent one. Marsha, what happened? Peter hit me in the nose with a football. I can't go to the dance like this. Well, I'm sure it was an accident, sweetheart. An eye for an eye. That's what Dad always says. I never said that, honey. Shut up! <laughs> Time to teach Peter a lesson. Marsha, eat a Snickers. Why? You get a little hostile when you're hungry. Better? Better. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Jan, this isn't about you. <laughs> it never is! <laughs> So those were big Super Bowl spots. When you have a platform, you can do other cool things. Um, for example, um, we bought the top 250,000 misspelled words on Google. And they cost nothing, because nobody wants to misspell words. So then let's say you typed in business, but it was business. And then it says, see, you're a bad speller when you're hungry. You should. So there's a lot of ways to reach people that don't have to be big productions when you have a platform. Or One quiet Sunday afternoon, we asked a celebrity to send five short tweets. Three days later, they were mentioned in Parliament. It's, it's, it's come to something when Katie Price's tweets make more sense on the economy than the Labour front bench. We'd been asked to launch Snickers' global campaign, You're Not You When You're Hungry, in the UK. Instead of TV, we decided to use Twitter. We asked five celebrities to tweet out of character. Katie Price, famous for her modeling, tweeted about macroeconomics. People were surprised and responded immediately. One tweet was retweeted 1,400 times. Even the BBC's economics correspondent joined in. Then, the final tweet revealed the campaign end line. National newspapers reported the story. Then, England footballer Rio Ferdinand tweeted about his new hobby, knitting. Once again, these out-of-character tweets provoked a huge response. Twitter had never been used like this. There were complaints, but in a landmark ruling, the Advertising Standards Authority cleared Snickers. And a campaign of just 25 tweets ended up reaching 26 million people. Online, in newspapers, on TV, on radio, and in Parliament. something that is uh, in a store as well, so something as linear as one of the things that we need to think about, about how do we work with our customers and do a consumer promotion, we were able to actually connect this as well to this great platform. This is uh, something that our colleagues in Australia did. Guys, what colour is this sock? Blue? You're Shut the up. dumbest I ever! I hate gold, you idiot! The internet is an angry place. 
But what if that's just because we're hungry? Luckily, Snickers has created the Hunger Rhythm, a hunger algorithm that monitors the mood of the internet. So when anger goes up, Snickers prices at 7-Eleven go down. Now when the weather's crappy, you get cheaper Snickers. Political scandal, cheaper Snickers. Meteor strike, definitely cheaper Snickers. So over meteors. To lock in a price, hit Get a Snickers on your mobile to get a reduced price barcode, then simply head down to your local 7-Eleven to claim your Snickers. <laughs> Snickers Hungerism. The angrier the internet, the cheaper the Snickers. Get your low price bar at snickers.com.au. You're not you when you're hungry. We just couldn't have thought of a promotion like that if we didn't have the platform, could we? Absolutely, and that was the easy thing. It was so obvious that you start thinking about obvious solution. Something very obvious that we thought about, and it's just uh, very, very recent, is Halloween. I'm sure that you all ate a lot of candies. I hope that you all ate our candies. And, uh, and something that this platform allows us to do is actually to look at a sneaker, uh, to look at Halloween in a very sneakers way. And it was actually only played on digital. Value. It's that time of year again, that spooky time of fear again, where ghouls and goblins rear their heads. Yes, it's Halloween. So go and get your scaredy pants, and let's all do the scaredy dance. Is it that time of year, perchance? Indeed, it's Halloween. Enough with that! <laughs> and I need a new skeleton. That one broke. Are you with me? Be in my trailer. Hey, kids. Welcome to J- I can't read the cards. You bring it. Oh, okay. I don't know who wrote that. Let's Looks like a child might have written it. Can we go? Let's go for the top. Uh, Sorry. Okay. There you go. Reset. Good, good. Resetting. Five. Hey kids, welcome to Jack and Leonard's Halloween Spooky Special. I can't read it. I can't read that. We gotta get it done, so let's just take it from the top. You know what, Gene? You take it from the top. You take it from the top, Gene. That's the thing. And why don't for this Halloween, you go as a competent human being? Not in front of the children. Oh, not in front of the children? Well, you're gonna do that? You're gonna pull that hen out here? I'm sorry, kids. Sorry about your day. Sorry I ruined your day. Everybody, let's put them together for Gene. And you know, uh, you know, you really have a good platform when regular people out there just kind of jump on it. We've had tens of thousands of user generated. Here's, here's just one example. Okay. So, so, so that's where they're, they're coming from. So, probably I think it's, it's, uh, this is a good way to, to wrap up. Uh, it's getting lunch lunchtime. We don't want to crank the audience. Um, so, I think we, we pretty much um, share everything that we have. So, I think a way of summarizing things. One of the most important things that we have found makes our, our client agency and our even personal relationship work is always talk. We talk about when things go well, uh, we talk about when things don't go so well, uh, we talk when there is an emergency and we need to support each other mutually because something has gone wrong. So just talk, talk, talk. I agree. Yeah. Um, something else as well uh, is about making sure that you are building a good relationship. I mean, these people working together. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is to start building a collaborative relationship to build good quality team spirit. Uh, I mean, in, whenever humans being are involved into anything, the most important thing they need to do is to build trust. Yeah, I mean, for the agency people, it's 10 o'clock at night, it's an emergency. You want to be the person or people at that table that the clients want to get help from. Yeah. And then we are going to end, actually, with something that should have been in the beginning. Because everything that we have just said cannot succeed if you do not start by sharing the same dreams. So the first thing is we're working with people that share your same purpose, that share your same vision, that share your same creative ambition. If you can dream together, you will build great things together. 
I mean, we're really we're humbled and honored to be part of uh, Mars's ambition, where they want to delight people and give them cool things and have success. And, and then their ambition for us is to deliver to, by demanding their, our best all the time. It makes it fun to wake up, you know, uh, it's a gift. And before we go, we actually wanted to share with you a work that we literally added a minute before we got on stage. Yeah. It was just released yesterday. So we were going to say thank you, but now we want to show you one more piece. And we say thank you. So this is an example of, our, of the way we work together. Uh, we thought of this a few days ago. We went and shot it on location the day after. We cut it. We made it. It's out now and getting incredible buzz. Uh, this is a, a thing for pedigree, though. It was, it was good, cheap, fast, and um, proactive. Tension reached a boiling point today outside of a Trump rally in Ohio, which started off as... see this dog out in the parking lot or anything? I'm trying to find his owner. He's really, really sweet. Is he straight? He was running with the leash, so he's obviously oh, really? someone's, yeah. you know? So We're looking for the owner. So you're, you're a Hillary supporter, are you? I am. And wait, I don't know if they're, like, minute, in line or... Are you a Trump supporter? And you are wearing, um... <laughs> huh. Yes, I am. Yeah. Hey there, little fella. What a beautiful dog. Mike, would you like to pet the dog? Oh, oh. look at that. <laughs> I have my own dog. I wouldn't want right. my dog lost or anything, you know? Yeah, definitely. I have a golden retriever, too. Oh, yeah? I've been a dog lover forever. I, I am, too. Yeah, the dogs don't criticize. Right, right. Especially my golden retriever. He'd be laying on our feet right now. <laughs> oh, look! There she is. Awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love that apparently when it comes to dogs, there's no political party. You know, I didn't ever expect myself to agree with the Trump supporter on something. We do agree that we love dogs and dogs love us. Mm -hmm. I think fundamentally, if you go talk person to person, they care about each other Absolutely. and they care about kids, they care about dogs, and um, unfortunately, that's not what gets out in the media. Things like this give us hope that we can all find common ground in some places, and um, I think that was what we were just a part of. <laughs> we have our differences, <laughs> but everyone loves dogs. I, I think they told us this Q&A, and there's 11 minutes left, so... Yeah, if there was a question, we'll take them.